Over 3,000 years ago, before the world was as we know it, the ancestral Pueblones or Anasazi were said to have dwelled in a dark subterranean realm called the Sipapu. This underworld was a place of shadows, where the first people lived in harmony, yet yearned for something greater. They were guided by their wise elders and spiritual leaders, who taught them the importance of harmony and balance in life. One day, the spirits whispered to the elders, revealing a path to a new world above. Led by their faith and the wisdom of their ancestors, the first Pueblones embarked on their ascent, climbing through a narrow passage that connected the underworld to the world above. As they emerged into the sunlight, they marveled at the beauty of this new world, a realm of mesas, canyons, and vast skies painted with the colors of the sun. The ancestral Pueblones were an ancient civilization with a rich cultural heritage. They thrived in the arid landscape of the Four Corners region, where the modern-day states of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah intersect. The civilization spanned over a millennium and left behind many remnants of their society and advanced architectural achievements. The ancestral Puebloan civilization went through several distinct phases during its existence from around 100 CE to 1300 CE. The period before 100 CE is not universally recognized or well documented but historians believe it may date back as far as 1500 BCE. It is the period that has the least amount of archaeological evidence and marks the earliest traces of their civilization. This period is characterized by a predominantly nomadic lifestyle, with small groups of people relying on hunting and gathering for sustenance. The ancestral Pueblones had not yet adopted agriculture, and their material culture was relatively simple, with limited evidence of pottery or other complex artifacts. During the Basket Maker II phase, the ancestral Pueblones began transitioning from a nomadic lifestyle to a more sedentary one. They focused on cultivating maize, a staple crop that allowed them to establish more permanent settlements. Although they were still primarily hunters and gatherers, the ancestral Pueblones developed basic farming techniques during this period. They also began to create finely woven baskets, which is how this phase got its name. In the Basket Maker III phase, the ancestral Pueblones significantly improved their farming techniques and expanded their agriculture to include beans and squash, in addition to maize. They started to build pit houses, semi-subterranean dwellings with roofs made of wood and earth. These homes were often clustered together in small villages. Pottery and the bow and arrow were introduced during this period, leading to advancements in both food storage and hunting. The ancestral Pueblones began constructing their first above-ground dwellings around 750 CE. These dwellings were made of stone and adobe. They were often built around central plazas, indicating a more communal lifestyle. Villages expanded, and the population increased, leading to the construction of larger, multi-storied buildings. Irrigation systems were developed to support agriculture, and trade networks began to form. The Pueblo II period is when the ancestral Pueblones started building the iconic cliff dwellings in the natural alcoves of canyon walls. These dwellings provided both shelter and defense from potential enemies. The population continued to grow, and larger communities, such as Chaco Canyon, became regional centers for trade, religion, and politics. Road systems were developed, and the construction of great houses, or large multi-room Pueblos, became more common. This final phase was called the Pueblo III period and this was the peak of ancestral Puebloan society. Construction of the massive cliff dwellings, such as those at Mesa Verde and other sites throughout the Four Corners region progressed. This period was marked by increased social complexity and the construction of large ceremonial structures known as kivas. The kivas symbolized the spiritual connection to the Puebloan origin story and played a crucial role in fostering community life. The ancestral Pueblones had a strong sense of community and relied on each other for survival. As their population grew, the need to make efficient use of the available resources became more pressing. The cliff dwellings allowed the inhabitants to make the best use of the limited space and resources in their environment. The south-facing alcoves provided natural insulation and passive solar heating, which helped to keep the dwellings warm in winter and cool in summer. 
The close proximity of the dwellings to the canyon walls and streams offered some protection against erosion and flooding, preserving precious farmland and water sources. The dwellings, with their interconnected rooms and shared spaces, fostered a sense of communal living. By living in close proximity, it allowed the families to cooperate and support one another in agriculture, religion, and social activities. There is evidence in this period that suggests conflicts may have occurred between different groups or with neighboring tribes. The cliff dwellings would have offered a natural defense against these potential threats, as their locations were often difficult to access and easy to defend. The limited entry points and the ability to monitor the surrounding landscape from an elevated position provided a strategic advantage in case of raids or invasions. The construction of the dwellings was a labor-intensive and time-consuming process. The ancestral Pueblones began by selecting suitable alcoves or rock overhangs in the canyon walls. They would then carefully excavate the rock face, creating a flat surface on which to build their dwellings. The primary building materials used were sandstone blocks, mortar made from a mixture of soil, water, and ash or crushed pottery, and wooden beams sourced from local trees. The sandstone blocks were shaped using harder rocks or tools made of stone or bone, and then carefully stacked to form the walls of the dwellings. The mortar was used to bind the sandstone blocks together and provide insulation. Wooden beams were used as support structures for doorways, windows, and roofs, as well as for the construction of floors in multi-story dwellings. These spaces often featured multiple rooms, storage, and shared kivas. Despite the passage of time and the harsh environmental conditions, many of the structures have survived to today, offering us more insight into the lives and culture of the ancestral Puebloan people. The fact that the dwellings were built in difficult-to-access locations and contained defensive walls and towers could point to violence and warfare in this period. There have also been some discoveries of human remains showing signs of trauma which could also suggest some sort of conflict in their society. Some archaeologists have unearthed evidence, including dried human excrement that could indicate cannibalism might have occurred, but that evidence is not widely conclusive or present in all of the archaeological sites. It is believed that these conflicts, combined with other factors such as climate change and resource depletion may have ultimately contributed to the decline and eventual abandonment of the ancestral Puebloan civilization around 1300 CE. The arid climate of the Four Corners region would have presented challenges in terms of water and arable land availability. As the ancestral Puebloan population grew, competition for these limited resources may have intensified, leading to disputes over land, water access, and agricultural territories. Prolonged periods of drought could have exacerbated these tensions, as communities struggled to secure the resources necessary for their survival. The ancestral Pueblones were organized into distinct clans and family groups, which may have contributed to rivalries and tensions between different factions. Competition for status, influence, and resources within the larger community could have led to disputes and conflicts between these groups. Rather than vanishing entirely, it is believed that they migrated to different areas, where they integrated with other native cultures. Descendants of the ancestral Pueblones can be found among several modern Pueblo tribes, such as the Hopi, Zuni, Acoma, and Laguna, who continue to preserve the traditions and stories of their ancestors. Thank you for watching Conceptual Learning's Ancestral Pueblones and their Cliff Dwellings. This concludes our video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more.